being said, we are right here with Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame fantasyfootball.com. He is on the line with us here this morning for all week five games inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios, hanging out here with you inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly presented by the Wildcat Sports Pub, 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York. Make sure you head out to the Wildcat to dine inside or outside as well as to for curbside pickup, takeout, and delivery. If you need any of that, you could call 315 315- for uh, for <coughs> pardon me 3154872222 that's 3154872222 with that being stated we're going right into the matchups here very excited about it mr Sofka, how are we doing today i'm doing awesome hey word to the wise have a plan check morning noon and, and evening every day this week with covid testing it's it's going to be a crazy ride from here on out so make sure you have alternative options in play should one of your teams not play this weekend unsuspectedly, have a plan. Yeah, you know, and, and that's great advice, Mike, to tell everybody to uh, have a plan in the grand scheme of things with all this. And and the reality of it all is you have to. You know, you have to be ready. You have to be prepared for anything that could come up at this point uh, because of the fact that there's already been so many injuries and you have, you know, your, your COVID-19 that's out there. And hopefully people – We'll be fine. People will be healthy and not, you know, have to deal with uh, much, if any, of this. But if it does happen, and you know, and, and when that something would come about, I do want to make sure that uh, people stay safe and that we stay well and with everything that's going on here, because it's very, very important uh, that we take care of things, take care of each other. But you know, Mike, it's I jokingly said it. Are there any running backs left in college football? Or pardon me, in the NFL? Are there any running backs left in I put that message out this week because the reality of it all is it feels like it's dwindling, you know, by by the week we're just losing people. We're losing our Christian McCaffrey's and our Saquon's. Now Nick Chubb is going to be out. Austin Eckler is going to be out. So you talk about being creative in COVID-19. It's, uh, you know, this season in general without having a, a true preseason and, you know, all of the normal workouts and whatnot, we have seen so many players succumb to injury and a lot of running backs so people have to get very creative in the backfield for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's this is what keeps Frank Gore at 158 years old employed. I mean, there's there's only a certain amount of guys that can do certain things. Pass block, catch the ball, and, you know, run the ball. Run the ball between the tackles, run the ball to the outside, take it to the house every once in a while, help us make first downs. Not an easy job. You take a pounding, and that's why a lot of teams have the dual running back thing, and, you see it comes in handy in Cleveland. Yeah, you know, and, and obviously it will. And it's uh, it's funny because I'm one week into uh, playing in, in one of the leagues. The league started late, and they invited me to join in the 11th hour. And I said, sure. And I picked up Kareem Hunt. You know, I drafted Kareem Hunt in the league. And so, uh, you know, I got an immediate message of, hey, what do you want for Kareem Hunt? You want this? You want this? You want this? You want this? I was like, no, nah, I think I'm good. I think I'm gonna hang, I think I'm gonna hang on to him for a little while, kind of see what he could do. You know, Mike, I, I don't think there's any reason for me to uh, sell Kareem Hunt at this point. No, not at all. You, as a matter of fact, you should be buying Kareem Hunt, but I doubt anybody's gonna let him go. Yeah, so I, I am uh, I am not gonna be doing that. That was a very easy decision for me. Uh, Mike and I, before we before we get into anything, we always give our uh, shout outs here really quick. So I'm gonna run down the gamut quickly because we got a lot of sh- a lot to uh, discuss here with our matchups this morning, but I want to go to the Gridiron Gurus League inside of Central New York, brought to you by the Wildcat. I want to give a shout-out <clears throat> to all of our winners that we had of this past week. So in NFL Week 4, I want to give a shout-out to a team has no name, Young Free and Singletary, Team Lynch and Binghamton CMC Sweepstakes, for all getting victories in the Gridiron Gurus League. I want to go to the uh, Cuse Contenders League and give a shout-out to our winners from Cuse Contenders for Week 4. And those winners are my team, Whelan and Dillon, uh, Beville Horton, Pie Hole Tuhi, and the Benchwarmers all getting victories in that league. And, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, for the captains on call, I want to give a shout-out to our winners in our Central New York League, brought to you by the Wildcat as well. A big shout-out to Team Cologne, Underdogs, Team Lasher, and Tallahassee Hero, Knowles. And then in my league 
with the Marywood alumni from my alma mater of Marywood University, my fellow Pacers. A big shout out in week four to the winning teams, uh, that being uh, Pennsylvania Sam Bell's Team SF, the Chiefs Kingdom, and Lights Camara Action. And in my league with Mr. Sofka, our Florida League, the Wake Up Call DT.com Orlando League. I want to give a shout out to our winners from week four. And those winners are uh, my team, Can I Go to Disney Now, which I'm still asking, as well as the TSR Jagaxians, Name Change in Progress, with a big happy birthday to Lisa for this week as well, and God bless to her. Uh, team Elite and Lando Lagoon, as well as Wicked Lester, all getting victories. So our shout-outs to you. Thank you to everybody that joined our Floridian League, as well as our Marywood League, and all of our leagues here in central and upstate New York. With that being stated, Mr. Sofka, we're hopping right into the action. We got a lot to talk about. There are there 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 is an actual bye week that's non corona related uh this week for the Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions. So nobody needs to worry about that. They're actually off on purpose. So we will not be uh talking about those teams this week. We're gonna start with Thursday night football, Tampa Bay at Chicago. What do you have for this? Yeah, you know, I, I, I like Tampa. I, I like Tampa in the game. I like Tom Brady. I, I think this is going to be an exciting one. Look, I think uh, I think when, when you look at Tampa, you think Tom Brady, but they're running a the ball. They're running a the ball behind Ronald Jones, number six on my rankings this week. Mike Evans, number 10 on the wide receiver rankings. Chris Godwin, probably not going to play again. Hey, if you're looking for a streaming uh, guy, somebody to help you out in a buy or an injury, Scotty Miller is your guy to pick up. Gronk is a guy who should be seeing a lot more action. I think he's feeling a lot more comfortable now. Right on time, they're going to need him, O.J. Howard, out. He's number 10 on my ranking. Tom Brady, number 14 on the rankings this week. You know, I had my doubts in the first half, and then he ends up with five touchdowns last week. That's what makes him the GOAT. On the other side of the ball, looking at Chicago, uh, Nick Foles, 26 on the rankings. I'm not playing him. David Montgomery. David Montgomery, number 18 on the running back rankings. Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson's on the up. If you can trade for Allen Robinson, do this. Because he's in, he's number seven on my rankings. He's going to be a top ten receiver the remainder of the year. Nick Foles makes him a better quarterback. Uh, Daryl Mooney's on his way up, too. Keep your eye on him. And Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham's going to be a touchdown guy for you, especially if you're in a touchdown-only league. He's your guy. He's not going to get a ton of targets. He's not going to get a ton of ton of receptions, but he'll have some red zone looks. He'll have some touchdowns, number 15 on my ranking this week. And, again, I'm going to take the Bucks. Yeah, you know, in this matchup for me uh, with Tampa Bay at Chicago, <clears throat> I think it's important. Uh, Tom Brady has definitely been helping me out, so I think that that's, you know, that's somebody you got to look to. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have an injury to almost every single receiver on their team. Scotty Miller, Justin Watson, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, John Hurst, John Franklin – that opens the door for, like I said last week, guys like Jadon Mickens that I covered in Jacksonville that has a lot to offer and doesn't have a lot of respect and he's not a household name, but he's somebody to look to because it could be someone this week where he gets a touchdown or two, does some good things, helps out in the slot, and people are trying to figure out who he is. You heard his name here first. Uh, Mike Evans, if he is able to play, he is still number one there. He is worth the play. Uh, Gronk is banged up a little bit and was limited in practice with a shoulder injury. But with O.J. Howard out you know, on injured reserve with an Achilles injury, it's very important to look to Rob Gronkowski or Cameron Brait. Uh, Rob Gronkowski, a mid to low range and uh, one at tight end, and Cameron Brait, a tight end two. Mike Evans, if he's able to play, he's still a wide receiver one. Uh, Tom Brady, obviously, uh, quarterback one for you. Leonard Fournette, he has an ankle injury and hasn't done a lot of great things. T.J. Logan, LaShawn McCoy, all injured, so Keyshawn Vaughn, and Ronald Jones are the guys out there. I don't really trust either one of them. I know somebody's going to show up, so uh, I'm not going to tell you don't play them in a flex or something like that, but they're not a running back one or a two. Uh, Tom Brady is where the money's at, and probably Gronk and, and Mike Evans. On the other side of it, in my opinion, uh, Anthony Miller, I picked him up in free agency, and some people have left him out there uh, that dropped him in the first few weeks. I took him. I think he is worth a play. He's a wide receiver, uh, two to me, in my opinion, maybe a lower end two. In this matchup, uh, you know, maybe a Jimmy Graham, but he's a tight end, too, in my opinion. And Allen Robinson, I'm not sold on. So, uh, ultimately, I would I would say the value lies in Anthony Miller and David Montgomery as a flex or running back three. I don't like a lot of what Chicago <clears throat> is selling these days, so it's hard for me to tell you to play any of them. 
Uh, my, and, and I'm going to pick uh, Tampa. I'm going to pick Tampa in this matchup. So, uh, with that being stated, Mr. Sofka, as we get set to uh, go back to things here, what is your play for the first Sunday game that we're going to have in that first Sunday matchup that we'll be having here? Uh, you know that that we'll have to talk about. Uh, excited to get into these for you Sunday at one o'clock. We have Carolina at Atlanta. What do you have for this? Yeah, geez, you know, I, I feel bad for Atlanta. He could be the next, we could see the next coach on the hot seat here, but they turned it on last year in the second half of the season. Too bad they can't turn it on in the second half of games. They seem to get crawled back on every time. You know, look, looking at the, at the uh, Falcons on the road, I'm sorry, Falcons at home. I'm going to take Matt Ryan at home, number eight quarterback on my rankings. Todd Gurley, even though he lacks that burst, number 21 on my running back rankings. We're seeing an increase in the workload for Brian Hill, and that's probably good for Brian Hill and Todd Gurley. Not enough to warrant the starting running back spot, though. Maybe an emergency flex. Julio Jones dinged up. I don't know what his problem is, but Calvin Ridley's leaving him in the dust. There's been talks about Julio Jones getting traded. Uh, but he's number 21 on the ranking. Should he play? I think he will. Calvin Ridley, number six on the wide receiver rankings. And Hayden Hurst, number 12. So he's on the back end of a tight end one. I think they're going to figure out a way to get him more targets. That's key in that offense there. Rolling over to Carolina. You know, Teddy Bridgewater is a solid quarterback. I like him a lot this week. I like him so much. Teddy Bridgewater, number nine on the rankings against that soft uh, Atlanta secondary. Mike Davis, number three running back. And, you know, if you got a deep bench, if you got a deep league, you want to stash somebody, Trenton Canyon right now is the guy to pick up for Carolina. DJ Moore, number 14 on my wide receiver rankings. And Ian Thomas is a low-end tight end, too, for us. Look, I think that uh, Atlanta is going to bounce back and figure out a way to make things happen. I just don't think it's against the Panthers. I say the Panthers win. Yeah, Atlanta, I said going into the season that Atlanta's defense made me extremely concerned, and they continue to make me concerned. They don't really have any threat whatsoever of a defense out there, and I told you that going into the season. I said, you know, this could be a resurgent year for Matt Ryan, but the defense is not something that I believe in. I think Carolina will get the victory. Uh, If you can play two, two quarterbacks, maybe this is a week where you think about Teddy Bridgewater. I'd probably leave him off. Uh, Mike Davis, because of the defense that he's playing, is worth the play. Uh, DJ Moore uh, is still a wide receiver, too, in a lower-end one, in my opinion. I like Robbie Anderson a little bit above him as a wide receiver, too. But these guys are worth the play because, again, who they're playing against. And that's where I would say the value is. For Atlanta, Matt Ryan, not a bad play, but he's a low-end one for me this week at quarterback. Calvin Ridley is still your number one guy. If you need some flex people and you're in a deep league and you got a bunch of injuries and you got to get creative, uh, Russell Gage as well as Alameda Zacchaeus is somebody to Alameda is somebody that I covered when he was at Virginia. Uh, somebody to look to at, at flex that's probably out there. But uh, to me, the most value is with Kelvin Ridley and uh, Hayden Hurst is a low end one, high end two for me at tight end. Todd Gurley uh, worth the play in this game, but still somewhat underwhelming. I would, you know, this is a time where I should be telling you Atlanta has no defense, but they have plenty of offense. They don't. You know, I really look at Kelvin Ridley, and that's where my focus is currently. So this should have more fantasy value than it does, but it's a little bit more quiet. If this was Christian McCaffrey, this could be a career day for McCaffrey, but unfortunately, he's not going to be out there for this team, so we can't say that. Next game up, Mike Buffalo at Tennessee. What do you have? Wow, Buffalo looks good. They look real good. They're undefeated. Tennessee undefeated, playing one less game with the COVID scare. Now they got two more people tested positive again. They went a couple days without any more positives, 20 people total, front office and team. And now they had two more pop up with a positive test. So, again, have a plan, be ready. Look at your lineups, look at your stuff morning, noon, and night, every day. You know, this way you're on the latest and greatest in the breaking news, and you'll be able to make adjustments. I got Josh Allen, who's been playing out of his mind. MVP caliber type play right now so far this year. Josh Allen, number six on my quarterback rankings. Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, who? Well, Zach Moss has been hurt a little bit. He might be coming back now, but Devin Singletary's got a hold on that job. Number 14 running back on my rankings. And here's what makes 
Josh Allen's job easy. He's got a solid number one, a solid number two, and a solid number three receiver. And I'm talking about Stephon Diggs, number 11 on my rankings, John Brown, number 42, and Cole Beasley, number 57. These guys all work well together, and they also downfield block for runs as well. So that's huge for that team. Buffalo does like to run the ball, and they're able to run the ball with Singletary. Going over to the Titans, Ryan Tannehill, 21 on the rankings. Derrick Henry, he's always a stud. He's always the number one running back. Number nine on my rankings this week. A.J. Brown still dinged up. Adam Humphreys dinged up. Uh, Corey Davis, by default, number 24 on my rankings. And John U. Smith, they're going to have to throw the ball to somebody. John U. Smith, number seven on my rankings. I like Buffalo. I like Tennessee. I hope this game goes off. I hope those COVID tests don't affect this game. I'm going to have to take... Buffalo on the road over Tennessee if the game is played. Yeah, you know, and, and hopefully, and God willing, uh, safety is number one and, and paramount importance if we're able to get this game off and going. Uh, a great game, and I think a lot better of a game than we have seen in you know years past when it comes to these two teams. Uh, Buffalo definitely uh, waking up here 4-0 this season, and the Tennessee Titans, another strong team that's out there and doing great things you know, in, in their respect as well. And them winning, you know, all the games that are in front of them outside of the Pittsburgh one that was postponed. So, you know, you got two teams here that are fighting for the right to stay undefeated. And will that happen is, uh, you know, is going to be up to Buffalo and is going to be up to Tennessee. On Buffalo's side, Josh Allen definitely worth the play. Uh, Devin Singletary, Stephon Diggs, John Brown. I agree with you on all these. Cole Beasley, I like him as a flex. Gabriel Davis is another guy as a flex to look at. Uh, you know, as far as Buffalo goes on that side of things. On Tennessee, uh, you know, Derrick Henry is worth your play here. And uh, in, and beyond that, I would say, you know, with A.J. Brown being banged up a little bit here and, and taking a look at him, he's questionable. If he is able to play, he's a wide receiver too. Corey, Corey Davis is a wide receiver too. Uh, Johnu Smith and Derrick Henry are your big plays. I used to say Delaney Walker and Derrick Henry, and now it's cut and paste in Johnu Smith with Derrick Henry. That's where, you know, your value is to me. But Buffalo's got a ton of value, and it starts with the man, Josh Allen, for sure. Next game up, my, and I'm going to pick uh, the Buffalo Bills on the road to stay undefeated. Las Vegas Raiders at the Kansas City Chiefs. What do you have for this? Yeah, you know, Chiefs just play well. You know, that, that, that game, I, I, that was a miserable game to watch, especially the first half. But you just knew the Chiefs were going to find a way to make things happen. That's what they do. But regardless, this game is always close. The Raiders and the Chiefs don't like each other. They've been playing this game for a long time. I don't care how much you don't like somebody. You can't go into their house and lay the smack down on them. It might be closer than people think, but I still think they're going to cover the line at 13 in Kansas City. Looking at Kansas City, they got all the weapons. They got all the weapons. They got all the power. Pat Mahomes, number four quarterback for me. Clyde Edwards, Elaire. Somebody called him Clyde the Glide. On the broadcast, I thought that was great. Tyreek Hill, number nine on the rankings, and Travis Kelsey, number two. So that means all top four positions, they have a one in each one of them, and that's that's just outstanding. That's how they're winning all these games. Going over to the Vegas Raiders, though, you know, I, I like some of the things I'm seeing. I like Josh Jacobs. I like Darren Waller. Darren Waller, number three tight end on the rankings. Josh Jacobs, number eight running back on my rankings. Wide receivers where they're having a problem. Hopefully Henry Ruggs is going to be back this week. Hunter Renfro, number 55 on my wide receiver rankings. And Derek Carr, number 25 on the quarterback rankings. I got to go Kansas City, and I got to go Kansas City to cover. I know they usually play close, but Kansas City is just too powerful for the Raiders. Yeah, I, I'm going with Kansas City as well in this game. I don't think that that's something uh, difficult to believe by any stretch of the imagination. This team also undefeated, and I believe that they will remain that way. Kansas City looking strong, and Buffalo uh, looking very strong as well. You know, with these last couple games we've been talking about and teams that are undefeated, I think Josh Jacobs is definitely worth the play for you. Uh, Hunter Renfro is a flex wide receiver three type of situation, especially if Henry Ruggs can't go. If he can, then I still think Renfro has some value. But Ren but Ruggs has been dealing with a hamstring injury, and I've talked about it over and over again, and I feel like a broken record. But the reality of it all is when it comes to your hamstring, especially as a wide receiver or a running back, uh, it really does hamper them, could hamper them all season long. So uh, my best and my prayers go out to Henry Ruggs and anybody else dealing 
with any type of nagging injury or injury in general. Uh, if he is able to go, he is worth a play, but he is a lower end wide receiver too because of that. Uh, Darren Waller is also somebody to look to as a tight end one, but on the lower end. On Kansas City side, uh, Pat Mahomes, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, as well as Tyreek Hill. Uh, McCall Hardman showed up recently here, so I told you that he could be a flex for you, so maybe you listened and did that. Uh, he could be a flex position for you this week as well. Sammy Watkins, a low-end wide receiver, two in my opinion, and Travis Kelsey, obviously a one. And as I stated before, I'm going with Kansas City in the matchup. The next one that we have up, Mr. Sofka, in these uh, matchups as we continue on here inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly presented by the Wildcat Sports Pub, 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York for dine-in, side, or outside, and then you can also go to them for curbside pickup, takeout, or delivery by calling 315-487-2222. So whether you're watching these games at home or on location, they got you covered. Next one up, we have the Arizona Cardinals going up against the New York Jets. I said in my preseason power rankings that the Jets were the worst team in football. Now that we're four weeks in the season going into week five, the Jets, in my opinion, are the worst team in football. What are your thoughts as they have Arizona coming to town? Yeah, I like Arizona a lot. DeAndre Hopkins, number one on the wide receiver rankings this week. Kyler Murray, number five on my quarterback rankings. So definitely a lot of value there. Nothing really to write home about from the tight ends. Chase Edmonds is on the way up and Kenyon Drake on the way down. Uh, you know, can you drink? If you drafted him, you drafted him probably too early this year in hindsight. Hopefully you picked up Chase Edmonds along the way because Chase Edmonds is outperforming, out touching, and looking like the guy could see a changing of the guard. But Chase Edmonds is number 36 on the rankings this week. The Jets, it's pretty easy. There's really nobody that you can play. Uh, you know, I, I don't know who we're going to see a quarterback this week. It's probably not going to be Darnold with the AC sprain. Frank Gore, number 44 on my rankings. Jamison Crowder, there's somebody you can play. Number 20, he should be come, coming back all the way now from an injury. Number 20 on my wide receiver rankings. Rashard Perryman supposed to be back as well, number 52. And Chris Herndon, number 23 on the rankings. I, I, I just don't have a lot of faith in the Jets right now. You said a lot there. Arizona's going to win this one big. Yeah, I got, I got nothing to uh, say too much on the Jets in this one. I'm picking Arizona with Mike as well. This is a, one of the easy picks for me of the week, and I know that now that I've said that, they'll make it an interesting game. But Kyler Murray, uh, definitely worth your play. DeAndre Hopkins as well. Christian Kirk is a low-end two, high-end three, but he'll probably get some work in here because they're playing the Jets. Uh, Dan Arnold, not anything to write home about, but... Because they're playing the Jets, if you need a tight end in a bind, you could look at him matchup-wise. And then, you know, Chase Edmonds, in, you know, he's a guy that I really didn't have a lot of thoughts, uh, you know, going into the season that he would bring a lot of fantasy value. But now he could be doing that. He is worth a play for you. If you're deep at running back, you could put him in one of your flex positions. If you need some help, maybe you could get him on waivers and go out and snatch him up. There might be some people that gave up on him already uh jameson crowder on the other side because he's multiple and he could do different things joe flacco will air it out if he's out there at quarterback so you know i think jameson crowder gives you a little bit of value to the jets but the majority of it lies with arizona and i i think deandre hopkins over 100 yards uh, should be this type of game and kyler murray during doing his thing as well i would uh, i would venture to say that you know arizona could have a, a career potential day for some of these guys and DeAndre should have over 100, maybe 150 yards in the matchup. The Battle of Pennsylvania, what do you have when the Eagles will head to the Steelers? The Steelers had to wait a week because of everything going on with Tennessee. What do you have for this one? Well, look for me on TV. I'll be playing wide receiver for the Eagles this week. They need help. <laughs> I mean, stuff. they're pulling... If they only if they had people in the stands, they could pull you out of the stands so you could play wide receiver for them. They're just beat up, banged up. It's ugly. Look, Pittsburgh's the better team here. Pittsburgh's going to come out on top. Let me get into the rankings. Ben Roethlisberger, 18 on the quarterback rankings. James Conner, number 12. Benny Snell, time to fade on him. I'm sorry, Benny. I don't have faith in you anymore. It's all James Conner until he gets hurt again. Number 12 on the running back rankings. Juju Smith-Schuster, number 28. 
And again, he's down a little bit too. He's not performing as well as I thought he would this year. Deontay Johnson, number 41 on the rankings. Eric Ebron. I think people forgot about him. I think when the unexpected buy came up last week, some people panicked if they had him and they dropped him and picked somebody else up. Go get Eric Ebron. He's going to continue to grow with Ben Roethlisberger right now, number 17 on the rankings for us. And Philadelphia, not as much value, but there's two real key plays. Those are Miles Sanders, number 13 on the running backs ranking, and Zach Ertz, number four. That's where the touchdowns are. Zach Ertz, he's a red zone machine. Hopefully Carson Wentz can turn something around, make something happen. He's number 19 on the quarterback rankings, and I can't rank any of the receivers here because – Heck, I don't even know who the heck they are. They're 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 rounding up high school players to play. With that in mind, I'm taking Pittsburgh. Well, you know they did have that movie with Mark Wahlberg, which talked about bringing on the walk on. So maybe it's time to reprise that role and let it happen again with Philadelphia. See if there's any walk ons that want to get some anger out from Corona times and go play on the go play on the football field. Uh, you know this matchup, Miles Sanders, hard to say no to him. And Zach feels so good at Ertz. You know, you got to put both of those guys out there for Philadelphia. I can jump to Pittsburgh from there. I have nothing else to say about Philly. Yeah, Philadelphia is, I mean, so many injuries. Deshaun Jackson was injured last year. He had a great debut, re debut with Philadelphia. Came back, did good, then went out right after. Uh, Elshon Jeffries hurt. J.J. Arsenega Whiteside's hurt. Jalen Rieger, their rookie that they drafted high, he's hurt. So Greg Ward, the former quarterback for Houston, he could be the guy out there for them now. But uh, Miles Sanders, and that's a that's a you know a lower end flex, you know, kind of take a flyer on somebody because you need help this week. But Miles Sanders and Zach Ertz is the way to go. Big Ben, James Conner, Juju, like them all, play them all. Eric Ebron as well. Have a heyday. I got Pitt in this one, getting that dub. And Mike, before we take our first step aside inside the. Fantasy Football Power Hour brought to you by the Wildcat Sports Pub. The Rams at the Washington. Your feed didn't get cut, folks. There's nothing to call them. So I had to pause. So what do you have for this one, Mike? Yeah, you know, the the Rams are the better team here. The Rams are going to win this game again, even though it's another left coast to east coast. One o'clock kickoff. I don't think that's going to be a problem for the Rams. Uh, looking at the Rams going through the rankings, Jared Goff number 12 on my quarterback rankings. And that's because he's got Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. Or as somebody called him this weekend, I heard him, Bobby Trees. I like Bobby Trees instead of Robert Woods. Robert Woods is a little more stuffy and formal for me. Bobby Trees, I like that. Bobby Trees, 18 on my wide receiver rankings. Cooper Cup number 12. Tyler Higby number 13. Malcolm Brown still dealing with that dinged up hand, 32, and Daryl Henderson, number 26. He's been a one-man show. Cam Akers injured and still just an afterthought. Looking at the Washington football team, Dwayne Haskins, 29. Folks, there's only going to be 30 quarterbacks this week, so you see where I'm coming from with him, okay? Terry McLaurin knows his bailout buddy from college at Ohio State, number 15 for the wide receivers. And Logan Thomas, number 14 for the tight ends. Antonio Gibson is a nice flex or RB2, RB3 at 25. And J.D. McKissick might get a touch being an emergency flex for you. I'm going to go ahead and say that the Rams are going to dominate in this one. Yeah, I'm not too worried about the Rams against the football team. Aren't we all football teams? You know, I mean, aren't all these teams football teams? That's where my confusion arises, I guess. If they keep the name, aren't they calling themselves everybody? So, I don't know. Just a question, just a thought. Take it for another day. Do what you want to do with it. A team has no name. There is a team in one of our leagues that's named that. But the team that has a name, the Rams will get the victory in this one. I have the Rams, uh, Malcolm Brown, Daryl Henderson. They're interchangeable at this point to me right now. Uh, I would say Daryl Henderson has a little bit of a spark, but Malcolm Brown is not gone, so both of them are flex uh, running backs for me. Cooper Cup is worth the play. I like Robert Woods more than Cup, so he leapfrogs him a little bit in my rankings uh, this week. And and typically, uh, Tyler Higby, eh, low end one uh, because they're playing Washington's football team. Kyle Allen's supposed to be your QB this week, potentially here. He's going to be your guy. So he's getting the start, and we'll see what he could do coming from Carolina and Houston before that where I covered him. Uh, I don't see a lot on Washington's football team to write home about. I don't see a lot of players for me to tell you to go ahead and play. So Antonio Gibson, if you're desperate, 
uh, Terry McLaurin if you're desperate, Logan Thomas if you're, you know, if you got two tight ends that you can play. But beyond that, the Washington football team, and as I said before, I hope the groundskeepers get paid by letter for all the things that they have to write in that end zone. With that being said, we're going to take a step aside for a fast break. When Mike and I come back, we will give you more of this Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly brought to you by the Wildcat Sports Pub on 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York. We will be back right after this to give you more games and get you set up for everything that's coming up. Finish up our 1 o'clock, head into our midday games of Sunday, and of course Sunday and Monday night football matchups coming up on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora right after this fast break. Carvel DeWitt, it's what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or iced milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream. Fresh, by hand, daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carvelite. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, Carvelanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carvelite ice cream. Carvel DeWitt. It's what happy tastes like. Cafe Cabal offers same day local delivery of our products, offering no delivery charge for Onondaga County. Shop CafeCabal.com for fresh roasted coffee beans, cold brew, travel mugs, and all your essential Cafe Cabal needs. Cafe Cabal, coffee for the soul. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315-487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT, where you're listening, you're watching on Facebook.com backslash LiveNowDT, as you can see it right there. We are inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios doing our thing as we always do, five locations in Syracuse as well as the mobile cafe that will come right to you and to your place of business, to your neighborhood, and the home delivery that will deliver right to your doorstep on no delivery charge for those of you in Onondaga County. You can get all that information at CafeCubal.com. You can also get the form to fill out for the mobile cafe and the information on how to order uh, local delivery by going to WakeUpCallDT.com and on the Central New York tab, clicking on Cafe Kubal. We're inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour. Like I always tell you, not A, not one of, but the fantasy football show for you to be watching every week wednesday from 10 a.m to 11 a.m eastern time minimally and uh, typically we go over here for you it's available after you see it live it's here on facebook on facebook.com backslash wake up call dt it's put there on our wake up call page it's put on twitter at call dt and it's on youtube.com backslash wake up call dt and there will be an audio version added from here on out to podbean as well as uh, podbean mix lr uh, stitcher Spotify, you, uh, there'll be it'll be on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. It'll be on iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio. So a lot of places for you to listen and watch 
our show. So thank you to everybody that trusts us with their fantasy football teams every single week. We're happy to help you as always. And of course, you can go to Winning Fantasy Football on Facebook. And when you do that, you can talk with us directly and ask us questions about your team. So we we appreciate those questions that come in. And you can send them to us in our live feed as we talk on mixlr.com backslash wake up call dt for members as well as which is free and on facebook.com backslash live now dt so if you have a question about your team and you need to address something specific you can always send it to mike and i we're happy to answer and you can go to the winning fantasy football group if it's outside of our live show broadcast and whatnot and you want to get us a question really quick you can always go over there with that being stated mike and i have uh, plenty of games to rock through here and we're going to do exactly that as we go back to our board of games for the week that we show you every single broadcast so you know where we are at in the show specifically so with that being stated mike Bengals at the ravens what do you have for this yeah i think joe burrow is going to learn all about the ravens defense this weekend you know i think joe burrow's had an excellent season so far but they're going to mix up something special for him. They're going to put some blitz packages. He's going to be okay on the run. He's going to do okay. But, you know, it's it's against the Ravens in their house. You know, the Ravens are a good team. And the Ravens right now, I think they're out for blood. Look, when you talk about the Ravens, you talk about Lamar Jackson, number one quarterback on my rankings this week. Mark Andrews, number five tight end on the rankings this week. Marquise Hollywood Brown, he's a big player, bus type kind of guy, but I like his action. I like his speed, and I think Lamar Jackson likes getting him the ball. So I think they're going to throw the ball a little more, Baltimore is, this week. So Marquise Hollywood Brown, number 26 on my rankings. Mark Ingram, number 30 on the rankings, even though he's been – load on the touches he hasn't been getting a lot of looks he's been getting some red zone opportunities look for uh an uptick from jk dobbins i'm not saying start him quite yet but jk dobbins is definitely a guy to keep an eye on cincinnati yeah joe burrow's been playing well but this is the baltimore defense he's still number 15 quarterback this week because they're going to throw the ball they're going to throw the ball because they can run the ball real well they've been running the ball really well behind joe mixon number 11 on my rankings Drew Sample, number 21 on the tight end rankings. He's going to be a red zone target. Tyler Boyd, number 19 on the wide receiver rankings. He's the true number one. T. Higgins is looking like the true number two, number 38 on the wide receiver rankings. And A.J. Green is a distant memory. I think Baltimore is going to win this one easily. Yeah, you know, I don't think this is a difficult one for Mike or I to pick when it comes to who's going to win this game. And I agree with you that Joe Burrow's had a nice season, and I picked him to be, to defeat the Jaguars last week to get his first win. So in the first four weeks of him being an NFL quarterback, the number one pick of 2020 got his first victory, and he did it over Jacksonville, and I had it happening. So I actually had a, a Jacksonville fan, or a, pardon me, a Cincinnati fan try to talk trash to me, and he's like, hey, man, we're going to, and I looked right at him, I go, I picked Joe Burrow and the Bengals to beat the Jaguars. He's like, oh, well, okay, you know, I was like, what am I going to say to that? And I was like, well, you know, I think it's going to happen. Jacksonville was on the road, and Jacksonville has, you know, not looked the greatest this season. So that's where we got him. Uh, you know, Greg asked where we have Joe Mixon ranked this week. Uh, Mike, if you just want to repeat that one more time. Yeah, J- Joe Mixon, I think, is, a, is a, a guy that you're definitely going to want to keep in your lineup. He's number 11 on my running back rankings this week. So number 11 on the rankings for Joe Mixon in this matchup. I think uh, Mixon's worth the play. Uh, Burrow I'd probably uh, leave off this week, in my in my opinion. Uh, T. Higgins I, I like at wide receiver. For the Bengals, he might be a low-end two, high-end three for you. Tyler Boyd hasn't done much this season. A.J. Green, eh. So I think it's really with T. Higgins. Uh, he had just one catch A.J. Green did in the victory for Joe Burrow, and every quarterback has their guy. So, you know, I would look out for T. Higgins on that side. On the other side, you got to play Lamar Jackson. Uh, I like Mark Ingram in this as well. Somebody dropped him, and I picked him up. I needed some help at running back. Uh, J.K. Dobbins as as well as out there. J.K. is a running back three. Ingram's a low-end two <clears throat> to me at this point. Uh, Marquise Hollywood Brown is worth the play in this matchup, and Mark Andrews, of course. And I would even look at the uh, Baltimore Ravens defense and special teams in this. I'm taking Baltimore in the win. Jacksonville at Houston. Houston is in terrible shape. Houston has a problem, but they think they got rid of it with Bill O'Brien. 
before Bill O'Brien left, he jettisoned DeAndre Hopkins away. I guess fans are thinking now, since we've gotten rid of Bill O'Brien, do we get DeAndre back? The answer from Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury is no. Houston has a lot of trouble. But Jacksonville's on the road, and Jacksonville has been screwing up. So, who wins this game of ugly, Mr. Sofka? Yeah, this is something else. I think, you know, I think the uh, Bill O'Brien general manager got Bill O'Brien to coach fired. They shouldn't have made him the GM. They should have kept him as coach. You know, it's just a bad situation. They had a tough opening schedule there. Baltimore, Kansas City. But it is what it is. He dealt DeAndre Hopkins. He, he, he was like Jack and the Beanstalk. Came back with a hand of beans. Was like, oh, look how proud I am. And, and everybody's like, what did you do? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. What did you do? Yeah, it's a sad situation. I still think that Houston has potential. And I still think Houston's a team you can get some value on fantasy-wise. Deshaun Watson, number seven on the quarterback rankings. But you got to wonder... Was it DeAndre Hopkins making Deshaun Watson look real good? David Johnson, number 16 on my running back rankings. I can't really start any of the receivers there because Brandon Cooks has let me down. You can go ahead and drop Brandon Cooks, by the way, if he's on one of your teams. Will Fowler's maybe a three or or a flex guy for you. I don't know who to start, Akins or Fells. Which guy is it going to be in the red zone? So there's a lot of confusion there for fantasy football players. Gardner Minshew for the Jaguars, number 10 on the – uh, quarterback rankings this week. James Robinson, undrafted Illinois State. How smart are you guys if you went out and picked him up right away? I don't think anybody drafted him, depending on when your draft was, but if you picked him up right away, you're happy, you're gloating, you're saying, hey, I'm the man, you're doing the dance, you're settled down. It's early in the year, okay? Number 10 on the running back rankings this week, though. DJ Chark, number 23 on the wide receiver rankings. LaVisca Chenault, on his way up, stock is rising. Keep an eye on him. Put him on your radar. Number 49 on my rankings. I don't think I can start a tight end from Jacksonville. I don't think I can start a tight end from Houston. Look, Houston's favored in this one by six. Three of those points are because they're at home. So that means it's a three-point game. This game could go either way. I'm going to take – I, I got to do it one more time. I got to take the Jags one more time. I took them last week. They let me down. I'm going to take them one more time here, Jags on the road. Yeah, you know, for this game, for me, uh, taking a look at uh, at the matchup as we have coming up here, James Robinson, fantastic, coming out of Illinois State. And shout-out to Illinois State that connected with me on social media when I gave some love to James Robinson. Uh, you know, uh, he is definitely worth the play. In their worst of games, he was still looking pretty. That tells you something about who he is and what he does in his fantasy value as well. DJ Chark is back. He is Gardner's favorite target, and he showed that this past week. So that is definitely worth a play for you, uh, for DJ Chark. Uh, LaVisca Chanel, I told you he's a flex guy, and he still looked good in the game, even with DJ Chark coming back. So I think LaVisca stays at flex. I think DJ Chark is a wide receiver for you to put out there. I think Gardner Minshew is a quarterback for you to look to. If you got two quarterbacks, you could play two a, a game. Definitely put Gardner Minshew out there. Depending on what you have, maybe you got somebody off this week, right? Maybe you had Aaron Rodgers and Gardner Minshew. Ain't nothing or ain't nothing to be sad about in that situation. So I like Gardner in this game because I, I don't really see anything with Houston's defense that would make me uh, be a, very fearful for Gardner. Remember, Last year, Doug Marone went for two, and the team lost in Houston when Gardner was enacting a comeback, and that's when they had DeAndre Hopkins, and they held the team under 20 points. I think they held them under 15. So I like Gardner Minshew, like James Robinson, DJ Chark, and LaVisca Chanel. On the other side of it, Duke Johnson and David Johnson. (laughs) I'm hoping that you don't have Johnson and Johnson, maybe for baby care, but not for your team in fantasy football. Deshaun Watson I like, Will Fuller the fifth. I am a fan of Brandon Cooks. I told you a long time ago I wouldn't pick him up, and I've kept to that. So if you do have him, I agree with Mike. It's time to cut bait and let him go. I'm going with Jacksonville on the road. Let's get a dub, Jags. I believe in you. Miami at San Francisco. Mr. Sofka, take me through it. Yeah, San Fran struggled through a lot of injuries here, but they were still able to win some games. They're 2-2. Two and two. They're playing well at home. They're playing the Dolphins or just woeful you know, they're saying in Miami it's time for Tua. The coach is saying, no, I'm not going to let anybody tell me when it's time for Tua. But Ryan Fitzpatrick has been 
stinking it up. Ryan Fitzpatrick, number 17 on my rankings because they're going to be losing the whole game. They're going to have to throw the ball. He's going to throw two or three picks. So as long as you don't get negative points, you'll be okay there if you're going to pinch a quarterback. Miles Gaskin, number 25 on the running back rankings. Matt Breda, a distant 55. Devontae Parker, number 25 on my wide receiver rankings. Preston Williams, 59. And Mike Gusecki, number 11 on the tight end rankings. San Fran, well, you're going to find a little bit of value. That value, of course, is in the name George Kittle. George Kittle, number one tight end this week. Jimmy Garoppolo is supposed to be coming back this week. I'm not sold on it. I think it's 50-50. He's number 22 ranked guy. I wouldn't be surprised to see C.J. Beathard start there instead of Nick Mullins after he stunk it up last week. Raheem Mozart injured. Supposed to be coming back soon. Until then, it's Jarek McKinnon. Jarek McKinnon, number 17 running back. I can't count on any of the receivers for San Fran because, well, Brandon Ayuk's going to look good at times. Debo Samuel's still getting back and None of these other guys really matter. I'm going to take Sam Fran at home. Yeah, and you said Jarek McKinnon, and I won't do it. I won't do it because I said I wouldn't do it, and I did it, and he tore his ACL that year. So I hope he stays healthy. But for my own health and sanity, I won't do it. I cannot take Jarek McKinnon, and, and that's not going to happen. It can't happen for me because I went against myself. Look at what happened, so I'm not going to do that. Miami Dolphins value Miles Gaskin. He's out there. He's out there. I saw him. So I'm just telling you, you better look for him. Miles Gaskin, uh, worth the play in this matchup, in my opinion. He's not a running back one, but he's still worth the play. Mike Kosecki, he was the guy that I felt the best about. When in doubt, go to your tight end. That's what they have done. Fitz likes him, so you got to continue to ride that horse. As long as Fitz is going in that direction, you got to go in that direction. So uh, for Tua Tagovailoa, just to let you all know, he's not starting yet, but at least he doesn't have an injury marker next to his name. Devontae Parker in this matchup, also worth the play as a wide receiver, too. For San Francisco, thank goodness that they drafted Nick Mullins and C.J. Beathard because they've needed them both over the past couple years, unfortunately. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is still uh, questionable. He has an ankle injury. Raheem Mostert is questionable with an MCL injury, as Mike was talking about. Uh, the Debo Samuel is back, so he's off of IR. That's good. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, he's, he's a flex guy, wide receiver three. Debo Samuel, I would say, is also that. The value lies in George Kittle with San Francisco. And, Mike, you know, San Fran's found a way to do it with all of these injuries. But guess what, Mr. Sofka? I'm trusting, I'm trusting in a little bit of road fits magic. I'm taking Miami in this game to get a victory over San Francisco. Wow. Indianapolis at Cleveland. What did I say last week? I said, I'm picking Dallas, but knowing Dallas, Cleveland will win. They didn't win. They won convincingly. They scored almost 50 points on the road at Dallas. They're, they're ugly, but they're not. The Browns are a team that you can't figure out. If the Browns were a girlfriend, you would never know what she needs. If she said she wanted peanut butter, you better bring her pickles. That's Cleveland. They're playing Indianapolis at home, Mike. Give me some sense of reality here. What do we have for it? And what do the Cleveland Browns bring to the table this week? Yeah, well, first and foremost, you know, OBJ had a heck of a game, three touchdowns. One of them thrown by Jarvis Landry. This brings me to two points. Number one, know the scoring system in your league because a lot of leagues aren't going to give you that touchdown that Landry threw. So if you're in a league like that and you're in a league like that year after year, it's the same league. You need to petition the league. You need to get with the commission and get rewarded, get points when that happens because some wide receivers are going to throw you a touchdown at least once a year, and that could come back. Second thing, OBJ fan, settle down. It was one game. It was against Dallas, and their defense is a sieve. Their defense is a colander. I went to rinse some vegetables the other day, and I went to get the colander, and it said Dallas Cowboys defense on it. It had a big star in the middle of it. Look, Cleveland is Cleveland. They're going to run the ball, with or without Nick Chubb. Kareem Hunt, number 15 on my rankings this week. The Ernest Johnson, that's the name you're going to want to go out and pick up. It's probably snatched up off waivers already, but go check the Ernest Aunt Johnson because they're going to manage the carries by Kareem Hunt. The Ernest Johnson, number 42 on my rankings. He had 13 carries, 95 yards last week, so put that in perspective. This is a guy everybody says, who? Odell Beckham. He's still going to put up a performance, okay? He's still going to look all right. Number 16 on my rankings. And Austin Hooper, number 16 on the tight end rankings. Baker Mayfield, bottom feeder. He's been more of a game manager lately. Number 27 on the rankings. 
Indianapolis, their quarterback's not doing much better. Bill Rivers, he's been more of a game manager, but he can zip the ball still at his age. Number 24 on the quarterback rankings. Jonathan Taylor, you know, I'm a little bit upset. I've been seeing a lot more Naeem Hines and a lot less Jonathan Taylor running the ball. And all these fans that drafted Jonathan Taylor and have been gloating a couple weeks when Marlon Mack went down, now they're disappointed. Jonathan Taylor, number 20 on the rankings. Naeem Hines, number 27. T.Y. Hilton, I don't know where you've been, my friend. I don't know where you've been all year. Number 30 on the rankings. Paris Campbell still dinged up. Zach Pascal, number 45. Mo Alley Cox, number 25 on the tight end rankings. Jack Doyle, my friend, get in the game. I know at times they had three tight ends. They had playing. They had two on the field most most of the game with Trey Burton as well. But, my gosh, we got to get Jack Doyle in the mix there. Until then, you, you can't play Jack Doyle. Doyle and, and Daly or anything. You might even drop Jack Doyle at this point if they haven't done something by now. But let me tell you, I think Indianapolis is a better team than they showed. I think their defense is strong. I think they made the dedication to run the ball, and they're okay with Phillip Rivers being a game manager. I'm going to take Indianapolis in this game in a close one. Interesting. Interesting and interesting you're taking him in this matchup. Okay, so you're taking, taking the Colts and Phillip Rivers. Uh, I'm going to take the Browns in this one. The Browns are home they're not on the road. I think they should win, so maybe they'll lose. The Browns make no sense. They they legitimately make no sense. But I can't I can't put Odell on my bench. I can't. I can't do it. I can't write it in my brain right now, and I'm happy that I couldn't bring myself to do it because he had three touchdowns in this last game. For Indianapolis in the matchup, Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines are worth the play as well as T.Y. Hilton. That's all I got for Indy because... They're tight ends. There's too much confusion. Nobody's really getting anything going on. Baker is a quarterback, too, this week. If you have to play two quarterbacks, put him out there. But I like Kareem Hunt, and shout-out to Dearness Johnson. Where are he from? South Florida, baby. So I knew about Dearness Johnson over these last couple seasons. I'm happy to see him out there. He is good to put out there as a flex. Kareem is good to put out there as your starter. Loving that with Kareem Hunt getting the job done. Hope that Nick Chubb gets healthy and gets back on the men very, very soon. Kareem Hunt. Huge, huge. People are, you know, the people like throwing things at me. The guy offered me one thing. I said no. He offered me another one. I said no. I said I'm going to wait on it. And then he literally said to me, "What do you want? <laughs> what? Do you, what do you need? Take, you know, take it. Take the house. Take the car. What do you need?" So uh, I said no. I'm keeping Kareem Hunt right now. Odell is also worth the play. And Austin Hooper, yeah, he could be worth something for you. I still think he's a low end one, high end two. I'm not sold on Austin Hooper, but. Jarvis Landry, I think he's a sneaky pick for you this week. I do like putting him out there, but I think the value is in Kareem and Odell with a little bit in Dearness Johnson as well. I'm picking Cleveland at home to rock the party and continue to confuse so many of us out there in this beautiful, wonderful world. The next matchup that we have up, Mr. Safka, in the Fantasy Football Power Hour, probably presented by the Wildcat Sports Pub. Call them for curbside pickup, takeout, and delivery. If you're watching the games at home or at your buddy's house or wherever it may be, you can call them at 315-487-2222 and order your food and get everything set and ready to go. If you're going somewhere to watch the game, well, they have indoor and outdoor seating, plenty of TVs, and every single game on at the same time on 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York. With that being said, Mike, this is supposed to be a good game. This is supposed to be a tough game. This is supposed to be a rivalry. But the Dallas Cowboys look like garbage, and the Giants' only positive that they can say is they're not the worst team in MetLife Stadium. That belongs to the Jets. The Giants are playing the Cowboys. This game looks to be pretty dang not eventful, but what do you have for it? Just think, one of these teams may host a home playoff game. In the NFC least, everybody's a bad team. Look, if there's one week you're going to play Daniel Jones, this is the week. Maybe you have Aaron Rodgers. Maybe maybe you have Matthew Stafford. Those guys are on a bye. He might be out there. You might be able to stream him. I have him number 11 this week against the sieve of a defense in the Cowboys. So this is the week to play Daniel Jones. Again, number 11. Evan Ingram, number 8 on the tight end rankings. Golden Tate, number 36 on the wide receiver rankings. And Devonta Freeman. Found a home, and Deion, Deion Lewis and, and Wayne Gallman are standing there going, what happened? What happened? We were here. He didn't do nothing. That's what happened. Devonta Freeman came in and took your job. I'm going over to Dallas. Dallas, 
Dak Prescott, number two. Ezekiel Elliott, number two. Amari Cooper, number three. And Dalton Schultz, number nine. They got all number ones across the board, every position. Of course, you're going to find value in C.D. Lamb as well. The rookie has been making quite an impression. Number 29 on the wide receiver rankings. And Michael Gallup, number 40. I know that there's Dalton Schultz out there on the waiver wires. So, again, I, I don't know what your situation is at tight end, but if, you, if you've been listening, you've been picking up the, 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 the waiver information I've been putting out each week, you would have been on Robert Tanyan for the three-touchdown game. God bless him, by the way. He only had five targets last year, and he had three touchdowns in one game. But, look, Dallas is the better team here. Dallas is at home here. I got to take Dallas because they're at home. Coming off that beating, the beatdown that Cleveland gave them. Take the Cowboys, but again, if there's one week you're going to play Daniel Jones, this is the week. Yeah, this game is not what it should be, but there is fantasy value to it. I am taking the Cowboys as well. I will no longer leave C.D. Lamb on my bench. I've been trying to figure out what to do with him for the last few weeks, and he had two touchdowns in this past week. Everybody ate, even though Dallas lost the game. Everybody everybody got a piece of the pie. Amari Cooper got a piece of it. You know, Dalton Schultz, as well as C.D. Lamb, as well as Zeke. Four touchdowns, one interception for Dak Prescott, who has been a fantasy stud this season. So, Devontae Freeman is worth the play. Darius Slayton, flex wide receiver. Evan Engram, flex tight end. Be cut, or not a flex. Well, yeah, you can put him in there at your flex if you got an extra spot for him. He's a low end one, high end two, because he's playing Dallas. This defense is non-existent. Sean Lee gets hurt almost every single year, and God bless the man. He keeps coming back. I want him to have a healthy season. The defense goes with him. When he's out, they struggle. But, so, I mean, with all that being said, Darius Slayton, Evan Ingram, Devontae Freeman. Devontae, I like him more because the former Falcon, now with the Giants, was not only running the ball 11 times for 33 yards, which isn't great, he was the second leading receiver on the team. And if you're in a PPR league, that's going to help you out double dose. So I like Devontae Freeman to help a lot of teams out. Daniel Jones, not a bad play, but the big time, big man on campus in this matchup, Dak Prescott, you got to play Zeke, you got to play Coop, you got to play Lamb. And Dalton Schultz, uh, if we look at it right now, he is questionable with a thigh injury, but if he's good to go, he is worth putting out there as well. Don't put either defense out there unless you don't like yourself. And if you don't like yourself, then please call somebody because it shouldn't be that way. I'm going with the Cowboys in this matchup, and I think that there's going to be a lot of fantasy scoring. And I think that Dallas, if you got a Dallas player named Schultz as well as Lamb, Zeke, and Dak Prescott, you're probably doing okay. Dak is not doing good in reality, but in fantasy, he is straight up doing what he needs to do. The Broncos at the Patriots, Mr. Sofka. Before we get into the nighttime games, what do you have for this? Yeah, this could be a game where nobody knows. If you're not playing fantasy football, you're not going to know who these quarterbacks are. I mean, you're probably going to have Britt Rippian again at quarterback because I don't think Drew Locke is ready to come back. By the way, Britt Rippian, number 30 on the ranking. And you're probably going to have Jared Sidham. Cam Newton won't be eligible to come back, even if his tests are negative. He's supposedly asymptomatic. And don't get me started on this New England KC game over here, where you get one guy on each team that tests positive. Then all of a sudden you have two days in a row with no, no, no positive tests. You play the game on Monday night to get extra Monday night ratings. That's what that was about. And then Tuesday... Stephon Gilmore test positive. I'm going to do a blog on this because something stinks in New England. Anyway, look, I don't know who the quarterback's going to be. It's probably going to be Derek Jared Sidham because Brian, Hoyer, Brian Hoyer stunk it up. Going over to running backs, Melvin Gordon, number 19 on my rankings. And across the way, James White back from the death of his dad and a critical injury from his mother, number 29 on the rankings. I'll tell you what, though, New England's got some value in there receivers they're gonna have to throw the ball because i think they may be behind in this game at some time julian edelman number 17 on the rankings in kill harry 37 nobody knows who the tight end is nobody's showing up maybe it's ryan Izzo, so i can't play any of those guys i know who the tight end is in denver it's no offense but he's dinged up we may see albert whatever his name is albert O. He's friends with Drew Locke from Missouri. We may see him unleashed this week. Jerry Judy, number 31 on the rankings. Tim Patrick, number 46 on my rankings. 
there's not even a line on this game because of the quarterback situation being in flux. I'm going to go with New England, though, at home. Yeah, this game is going to be ugly. <laughs> so, it's, I mean, this could be a 10-3 to game, honestly. Melvin Gordon, he's a flex guy. Jerry Judy's still getting me points, so he's worth the play at wide receiver for you. He's a wide receiver, too, in my opinion. Uh, I have nothing else to say about Denver. New England, New England does stink, right? The tapes disappear. How about this? In the case against Robert Kraft, what did they say? We're not going to use the footage. Isn't that the only evidence you have to use is the footage? But the footage wasn't used on the field when it came to taping stuff, and the footage wasn't used in the massage parlor when Robert Kraft was whatever. So I don't understand doing it. We don't. We have a positive test, but it's only one player. They didn't spread it to anybody. Tennessee's got it going all over the place, and it's just Cam Newton. Nobody touched him. Nobody went near him. Nobody caught any passes from him. None of that. Nothing happened in practice at all. We're going to play the game. Oh, now people are testing positive right after the game. Yes. Something stinks in New England. It always does. But guess what? Nobody does anything about it. So I am not sold on a lot. Maybe Julian Edelman or Nikhil Harry, if you have to reach into your flex ball of goodies and pick out a random name, I don't think there's a lot of fantasy value. Like I said, a 10-3 to game, in my opinion. If anybody's going to do anything, it's Jerry, Judy, Beyond that, have yourself a day. I don't even know who to pick in this game, Mike, but I guess I will pick... Uh, I don't even know. You know what? Screw it. I'm going with the Denver Broncos, so I think that they have more talent right now, fantasy-wise. So I'm going to go with the Denver Broncos in this matchup, and we'll see what happens. I know they're on the road, but it's just going to be ugly. We'll take our final step aside here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. When we come back, we will wrap up with Sunday and Monday Night Football. Inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly presented by the Wildcat Sports Pub. You are listening and watching Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios with five locations around Syracuse, New York. The mobile cafe that will come to you and the local delivery that will come to your doorstep. Find out more at CafeKubal.com. Avacoli's Restaurant, located right at the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road, is proud to be your local neighbor, growing with you for over 20 years. We're open seven days a week for lunch, dinner, and drinks. For takeout, delivery, or catering, call us at 315-622-5100. When you order online and use our promo code ABS10, you will save 10% on your online purchase at myavacolis.com. And make sure to join us monthly for our live on-site broadcasts centered around Liverpool Athletics. Avocolis, your local, trusted neighbor right at the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road. Having peace of mind when you're out of town that your furry-loving friend is safe and sound means taking them to canine campground because we all know that when it comes to the love of our pets it goes well beyond the call of duty to make sure they're safe and sound right lily <laughs> so take a ride to 242 johnson street in east syracuse new york and see canine campground and where your dog will be staying in the classic cabin the executive cabin the grand cabin or of course the luxury cabin because if you know lily you know she loves luxury <laughs> Now you don't have to wait to the last minute to find a family member or a friend that'll take your dog for a few days. Call K9 Campground at 315-299-4013. That's 315-299-4013. Their drop-off and pick-up times are Monday through Sunday. Check K9Campground.com for more information. That's the letter K, the number 9, and campground spelled with a K, dot com. K9Campground.com. When you're going out of town, bring your dog to Canine Campground. Trapper's Pizza Pub, located on 5950 Butternut Drive in East Syracuse. Right off of Bridge Street is your local community supporter right around the corner. 
Join us on site at Trapper's Pizza Pub for our live monthly broadcast supporting Central New York student athletes and their sports programs. Call 315-438-4444 for more information. And find us on Facebook and Instagram at Trapper's Pizza Pub. Trapper's Pizza Pub, your local community supporter right around the corner. What's up, my good people? We're back here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on Wake Up Call DT.com, your one stop sports shop, on MixLR.com backslash Wake Up Call DT, and on Facebook Live on Facebook.com backslash Live Now DT. We're inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. Check them out on social media Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for all their information up to date and in the moment at Cafe Kubal. That's K U B A L. Go to CafeCubal.com for information on local delivery as well as their mobile cafe and all their locations. You can get all this information as well on WakeUpCallDT.com. Go to the Central New York tab and click on Cafe Cubal as well as all of our proud partners. Cafe Cubal, the exclusive home of the DT special drink, and that is your pumpkin spiced chai. I get mine with almond milk. Get yours however you want for mobile pickup as well as walking right in and grabbing one there at any of their locations on 3501 James Street, 401 South Salina Street, as well as 324 West Water Street inside of Golisano's Children's Hospital and the newest location at 201 North Townsend Street for the Holly Green Cafe. We're inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly presented by the Wildcat. Mike Sofka is here with us of Winning Fantasy Football so make sure you check us out there. Go to Facebook, type in Winning Fantasy Football, and join our group. It is free and it is easy, so make sure you do it today. And, of course, you'll find Mike on Hall of Fame Fantasy Football. Dot com. Mike and I got two more games to do for Week 5. We're going to bring you right into Sunday Night Football, Lake Minnetonka at the 12th man. What do you have for Minnesota going up against Seattle? Yeah, neither one of these teams has been playing defense very well. This is going to be a super high-scoring game. It's going to be a lot of fantasy points. If you're playing daily fantasy, you know, if you're playing DraftKings, you're playing FanDuel, whatever you're doing there, just draft guys from this team here. You're going to you're going to be doing fine. Look, Kirk Cousins, number twenty on the quarterback rankings, but here's where the meat and the potatoes is: Dalvin Cook, number five on the running back rankings; Adam Thielen, number four on my wide receiver rankings; and Justin Jefferson, number twenty-seven. Kyle Rudolph, not so much, number 29. There's a lot of money, though, on the Seattle side. Russell Wilson has been phenomenal this year. Number three on the quarterback rankings, Chris Carson. Hey, he ain't going to let a guy twist in his knee, keep him down. Number seven on the running back rankings, Tyler Lockett, number five. DK Metcalf, been dinged up a little bit, still pushing through. Number 13 on the wide receiver rankings for the second year pro. And Greg Olson, number 20 on the tight end rankings. A lot of fantasy points in this one. Hey, when in doubt, if you're not sure who to take, take a guy from Minnesota, take a guy from Seattle. I'm going to take Seattle to win this game. Yeah, you know, I'm going to pick Seattle in this matchup as well. Uh, Seattle's one of those teams that I think is Super Bowl worthy as of right now. I think that they can make it there uh, this season, just what they've been able to do. And, I mean, really, I'm, I'm I, like Mike said, defense not wowing anybody, but their offense is most, most surely wowing me right now. So I, I think there's a lot of good there in Seattle. I like Delvin Cook in this game and Adam Thielen on the side of Minnesota. Irv Smith and Kyle Rudolph are kind of interchangeable as tight end twos right now. The values in Thielen and Delvin Cook. On the other side, Russ Wilson doing his thing for me. Thank you, sir. By the way, shout out to Russell Wilson. He played in Wisconsin and at NC State. NC State has more quarterbacks currently in the NFL than any other team. They have five right now. And if you can name them, maybe you looked up my stuff. So I wonder if you can name them, but I will tell you, there's two on the same team. Two on the same team. Phillip Rivers and Jacoby Brissett. Russell Wilson, also a part of this shindig here. Let's see if you can name the other two. But uh, Russell Wilson worth the play. Chris Carson as well. Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. I like them all in this matchup. Seattle, I have with the victory and a lot of fantasy value for them. The final game that we have of the week, Mr. Safka, is Monday night. It sees the L.A. Chargers travel to the New Orleans Saints. The Saints haven't looked pretty, and the Chargers have had some moments, but they haven't looked great either. What do you have for this? 
Yeah, I, well, hold on a second because you piqued my interest. Now I know I got Ryan Finley as one of those ones that you're missing there. I'm trying. I'm racking my brain here. I mean, I could. I, I don't, who's who's the other one? So okay, so you got you got Ryan Finley. You got Philip Rivers. Okay. You got there, you know, Kobe Brissett. Yeah. You got uh, you got Russell Wilson who had a cup of coffee there. Uh, who's the fifth one? Jaguars backup quarterback Mike Glennon. Oh, I forgot about him. All right, all right, all right, yeah. all right, all right. Back, <laughs> all right, back to it here. The Chargers at the Saints. Look, you never bet against the Saints at home. I'm going to take the Saints. I'm just going to put that out there, but it doesn't take away from what Justin Herbert's been doing so far this year. Justin Herbert's been playing out of his mind for a rookie. Number 16 on the quarterback rankings this week, Joshua Kelly going to take over for Austin Eckler going on IR for a bit. Joshua Kelly, probably not out there at this point in the week, but double check. Also pick up a Justin Jackson because they're going to do kind of like Cleveland does. They're not going to tire out that one running back. So two running backs are going to play. So Justin Jackson is the guy to keep on your radar. Keenan Allen, number two wide receiver this week. They're going to be playing from behind. Justin Herbert's not afraid to throw the ball. He's not afraid to throw the ball to Hunter Henry either, number six tight end this week. Going over to New Orleans, Drew Brees, number 13. The old man still hanging in there. I have a feeling this is going to be his last year. But you know what? It may not be because he's got Alvin Kamara, the number one running back, the number one fantasy running back, usually week in, week out, number one again this week on my rankings. And they run the ball pretty well in New Orleans. Look for Latavius Murray to snatch up some goal line carries here and there. 34 on the running back rankings for Latavius Murray. Michael Thomas may be out again. Traquan Smith, number 34 on my rankings. Jared Cook is injured. So it's going to be Kamara. It's going to be a lot of Kamara. It's going to be running the ball. It's going to be Drew Brees. It's going to be improvising. I'm still going to take the Saints. I'm going to take the Saints at home. Yeah, I got to take the Saints in this matchup as well. Uh, Herbert's going to go out. He's done some nice things. Not worth a fantasy play, though. Uh, Joshua Kelly is going to be out there for you. So there could be a bump there. Justin Jackson is a deep flex. He's one of those guys that could maybe get some action. But, you know, I'm not sold on either one of them. Josh Kelly, if you had to go anywhere, I guess you could go with him. Uh, Keenan Allen is worth the play. And Hunter Henry as well. On the other side for the Saints, uh, Drew Brees, lower-end quarterback one. But if you need some help on a Monday night, he's somebody to play. You might have him with some of the other guys that, that may be off so or maybe maybe injured. So Drew Brees, not a bad play in this matchup. Uh, I don't think it's going to be great, but he's playing his old team, and that does something to some people. Uh, Elvin Kamara, obviously worth the play. Latavius worth the flex. And Traquan Smith and Emmanuel Sanders, they are helped by the fact that Michael Thomas uh, still being questionable with an ankle injury. If Michael can play, then he's worth the play, but I still would think that Traquan or Emmanuel Sanders is going to get some love out there, so that's something to look for. Most of your values in Alvin Kamara with some value in Latavius Murray, so that's what I got for you. That being said, Mike and I have given you all of week five with the Detroit Lions and the Green Bay Packers will be off this week. Mike, as always, I appreciate you. I thank you for everything, and I look forward to talking with you soon. Awesome. Remember, always draft your kicker last, and if you're not two weeks ahead, you're a week behind. Talk to you next time, Dan. Sounds good. That coming from Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com. You can also find us both by going to the Winning Fantasy Football group on Facebook. With that being stated, inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios, big thanks to the Midweek Blitz with Julian Wiggum, our first show that you can go back and watch. You'll also find it on YouTube. Uh, dot com backslash wake up call dt later today you'll find it on facebook at wake up call dt and twitter at call dt so make sure you check it out as well as this video with mr mike sofka of hall of fame fantasy football.com in the wildcat sports pub proudly presenting you the fantasy football power hour for nfl week five may we all stay healthy may we all stay well may corona be gone and gone for good and may you have the best life possible god bless no stress. Do your best to each and every single one of you. Have a great day. Find us on Facebook at Wake Up Call DT, Twitter at Call DT, and Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT. All the time on wakeupcalldt.com. And Cafe Kubal has the DT special. Carvel DeWitt has the Orange Dream, which is my Sunday and shake, which is like eating an orange creamsicle as a Sunday or drinking 
and Orange Creamsicle. So make sure you go there for all of that. And I want to remind you all once again to find us every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Facebook.com backslash Wake Up Call D or Live Now DT and on MixLR.com backslash Wake Up Call DT as we get set here. So I want to let you all know that one more time to find us there. And of course, you can search Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora to find our audio version of the show on Stitcher, TuneIn, Podbean, iHeartRadio, Spotify, MixLR, iTunes Podcast, YouTube, and so much more. And of course, you can go to YouTube.com for the video version at YouTube.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. Thanks to all of our Central and Upstate New York partners, Carvel DeWitt, Cafe Cubal, Wildcat Sports Pub, Canine Camp Dog Daycare, Canine Camp Ground Dog Boarding, Chick-fil-A Cicero, Avicoli's, Honda City of Liverpool, Mon Paz Kettle Corn, and Mon Paz Popcorn.com. Use the promo code DT20 for 20% off, whether you're going in the store or having it sent to you. Trapper's Pizza Pub, the Mill House Market, and our beverage guy, always here in the studio with us, Coca-Cola, Rain, Monster Energy, and Body Armor. Have a fantastic day. Get a DT special pumpkin spice chai. And today is Wednesday, so go to Carvel DeWitt on 4322 East Genesee Street in DeWitt, New York, and get your double dose of the Orange Dream Wake Up Call Sunday. You get buy one, get one. Wednesday is Sunday at Carvel DeWitt, so get yourself a buy one, get one Orange Dream Sunday at Carvel DeWitt exclusively today. Have a great day. God bless, and I'll talk with you soon. Be good, everybody.